Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the concept of a partnership as a flow through entity. What does that mean? Well, here's what we need to know about partnership. Partnership is not required to pay federal income tax. Well, that's excellent. So why don't we all operate as a partnership if that's the case? Well, the partnership don't pay the taxes, but someone else will pay the taxes. Each partner is responsible for reporting their proportionate share of a partnership income or loss on their personal tax return and pay any tax liability that arises. Well, yes, the partnership, they complete a form called 1065, an informational return, is we will have the revenues minus their expenses, they will get to the, to their net income. Let's assume this partnership will have two partners, Adam and Noah. And for simplicity, assuming 50% ownership. Now let's assume the revenue is 3 million, expenses were 1 million, so net income is 2 million for this company. Well, if that's the case, of that 2 million, 1 million goes to Noah, 1 million goes to Adam, and they pay taxes on that income. So the partnership itself, no taxes, but the partners, Adam and Noah, will pay the taxes. So this is what we mean by by a pass-through or a flow-through entity. Pass-through or, or, or flow-through are the same. So a partnership is required to, for, to file Form 1065, and I'll have a separate recording showing you Form 1065 and Schedule K-1 where they report this information to the partners. I will do it at the end of the chapter so we can have a comprehensive review. And each, each partner will receive their own share. So the partner utilized Schedule K-1 to complete their tax return and pay their tax bill appropriately. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Let's take a look at a simple example. Noah provides a land with a basis of 60,000 and a value of 60,000 receiving a 4% interest in the profit and loss of ABC company. In 20x5, ABC earns 220,000 220, of taxable income and distributed dispenses a cash amount of 10,000 to Noah. Well, what is Noah's tax obligation? Well, here's what's gonna happen. Noah's tax obligation is the partnership made 200,000, 40% goes to Noah, Noah is responsible for 88,000. Well, how about the 10,000? No, the 10,000 is, is not taxable to Noah. Noah is responsible for the 88,000. This is what we mean by pass through entity. The same principle applies if XYZ, or I'm not sorry, ABC incurs a loss. Noah would allocate 40% of the loss, which he could then deduct provided, you know, there is no loss limitation, as we will discuss later. Now, what makes the partnership taxation little bit unusual? Well, there are two principles. It originates from two legal principles. One, we have to look at the partnership as an aggregate principle or known as conduit principle, which is its transfer principle. And the other concept is an entity principle. So a partnership will have those two principles. What do we mean by an aggregate principle or also known as conduit principle? Well, what is an aggregate or conduit? It means something is being passed. And you already know that the profit and other things, profit, deduction, losses, expenses, are passed through as well as credit. So the aggregate principle basically states that the partnership as a conduit transfer income, credit, deduction, and after tax-related items to the partners. So we have, let's assume this is the partnership, and what's going to happen? The partnership, it's going to transfer things to the partners. So the partnership is no more than a group of taxpayers united in a, in a representative relationship. So all these individuals are basically independent. Each one of them is independent for tax purposes. But in a partnership, they look as one entity. But really, each one of, each one of them is getting their own share 
of the partnership income losses credit and other items so for example income taxes is levied on the partners directly not on the partnership so they pay the taxes this is called the conduit conduit means a transfer to something else also the partnership has something called the entity principle and that's why for a partnership we f we file a form 1065 as an informational return because the entity principles view the partners which is the people who owns the partnership and the partnership itself as distinct entity given the partnership its own identity but that identity not taxable it doesn't pay any taxes it has to file an informational return it's required to submit a form 1065 which we will see later that provides summary of the transaction throughout the year but on that form there is no place where the partnership pays any taxes all the items on that return is transferred to the owners now we have to be familiar with capital interest profit interest and loss interest for partners starting with capital interest usually the capital interest is not negotiable it's what you get for what you own in the company what you get for transferring assets the partnership percentage ownership of capital which is the ownership of equity or net asset of the company this is what you get also in case of in case of liquidation so the capital interest for example a company will have assets will have liabilities and will have equity under the equity you could have partner a you could have partner b you could have partner c and each one of them for example this individual own 30 30 and 40 percent this is the capital interest usually that's not negotiable that's not negotiable we have a profit and loss also known as profit sharing ratio well that's agreed upon between the partners for for example here uh, if the company made a thousand dollar in profit how are we going to distribute this profit well we can distribute it 30 30 and 40 or we can distribute it in some other form which is 20 20 and 60 24a 24b and 64c it's negotiable same thing applies to the loss interest which is how much of the losses are you going to absorb that's based on the agreed upon agreed upon agreement the contract it's negotiable how we distribute the profit and loss for example we have an a a and b form partnership a b partnership a contributed forty thousand b contributed sixty thousand well guess what the capital interest for each is 40 percent a 60 percent b why because the total contributed is a hundred thousand a contributed 40 of the of the 140 percent a gets 40 b gets 60. now year end ab partnership has net income of 10 000, 10 000. how do we distribute this 10 000? well how do we do it well if you said 40 percent to a 60 percent to b you are not wrong unless you all unless you are told otherwise if there's no special allocation or in the agreement in the agreed upon agreement there's a way to distribute this the profit or the loss for that matter if it's a loss then you would assume it's 40 percent to a 40 percent to b so the partner profit interest is based on a partnership agreement it's negotiable between the partners in the absence of that you can go with those percentages unless otherwise sold if not you have what's called a special allocation which is it's a different percentage unless otherwise sold ci equal to pi and l i also we need to be familiar with a term two terms one is called inside basis and one is called outside basis what is inside basis and outside basis inside basis is the inside basis that that refer to the adjusted basis of each asset owned by the partnership so we have the partnership this is the business the business is the partnership and inside the business they will have assets and these assets will have basis and this is what we mean by the inside basis so this is the partnership this is the business itself the partnership so it's the partnership adjusted basis for adjusted basis for each asset it owns so the partnership itself will have its own basis and every partner effectively hold a proportionate share of the inside basis of all partnership assets and guess what those shares are owned by partners and those partners own a, a proportionate share of these assets 
This is the inside basis. What are the outside basis? Outside basis represent the basis of each partner in their, in their interest in the partnership. So these individuals on the outside, this individual, the partners, they own interests, a percentage in the partnership. This is the outside basis. So notice the inside basis is the basis of the assets that the partnership owns. Outside basis, most likely we'll be dealing with outside basis initially, it's the basis of the partners themselves. How much do they own of the partnership? Now, it's very important that the partners keep track of their individual outside basis. Initially, when, the, when initially the partnership is formed, the inside basis equal to the outside basis. So whatever assets you contributed, it has an adjusted basis and you own part of those assets. So initially, the inside basis equal to the outside basis. Then the inside basis and the outside basis might differ down the road. Why? Many reasons, we'll talk about that later, but it could be a new partner acquire share through a sale or an exchange that's different than the inside basis, so they pay a different amount. Or there was a distribution of cash or property with inside basis that exceed the outside basis, that's another reason. Or a partner dies, a partner dies will have to give their share or their interest to someone else. We have to give them some interest in the company. And what happened is the interest that we're giving them would represent because we're giving them the fair market value it's going to it's going to represent a larger share than the interest itself the third reason could be when a partner dies when a partner dies the people that inherited the the their share their percentage they could be receiving they could be receiving an interest that's different than the inside basis so the outside basis and the inside basis will be dif different don't worry we'll talk about that later let's talk a little bit more about outside basis of partners because this when we mean basis of partners we mean outside basis when the partner receives income or profit from the partnership their basis will increase why because remember when we talked about the first example in the first example the the partner gets allocated some income to them and that income increased their partners why because the income was taxed let's go back to that example real quick if you go back to the example that we worked on early on in this presentation we looked at this example and remember noah got 40 percent of the 220 000. that 40 percent and we said noah paid taxes on that 88 000. that's Noah's share of taxes once you receive that income, whether you receive it or not, it doesn't matter. Once it's allocated to you, because you may never re receive it in cash, it's allocated to you, you pay taxes on it. Once you pay taxes on it, it's going to increase your basis, increase your basis. On the other hand, if there's any deduction or any loss from the partnership, your basis will go down. And we'll have, we'll talk about much, much more about the basis. And these changes guarantee that the items related to the partnership are only taxed once. Because remember what happened to Noah. Noah received, were allocated 88,000 in income for that particular year. Now, if Noah takes this money, if Noah withdrew, withdrew $50,000, Noah wants to, to put a down payment on a new home. Noah took $50,000 out as a distribution. That's when Noah receives the cash. That transaction is no longer taxable. Why? Because Noah already paid taxes on this income when it was allocated to them also keeping track of the outside basis are important for the deductibility of partnership losses so if you have losses we want to make sure we can take the losses and deduct it against our basis tax treatment of partnership distribution i just told you when noah took fifty thousand, well that's a distribution we want to make sure it's not taxable also calculating gains and losses when noah actually sells their interest on outside party. And let's take a look at an example. An exchange for 40% interest in XYZ, which operate as a partnership, calendar year partnership, NOAA contributed $100,000. This year, XYZ generates 80% of regular taxable income with no individually stated income or expenses. So we have no separately stated item. During the year, NOAA takes out $10,000 from the partnership. What's the, the tax effect to NOAA? So how much is Noah will have to pay taxes? Now, what's wrong is to take 10,000, say the tax effect is 10,000 because Noah takes 10,000. No, it does not matter. If the partnership generated 80,000, Noah's share is 40%. Noah will have to allocate 32,000 to their income as taxable. 
Now, Noah took 10,000. Well, that's not taxable because the whole 32,000 is taxable. Of the 80, Noah shares a 32, and we can assume this 10,000 is coming from that 32. Now, what's the basis in the partnership for Noah? Well, Noah started with a hundred, with a hundred, with a hundred thousand dollar, started with a hundred thousand dollar contribution. Then, then Noah absorbed or increased their basis. So they started with one hundred thousand. Increased their basis by how much? By thirty-two thousand. Then they took 10,000. Remember, I told you they took 10,000. When you take the 10,000, it's coming out of reducing your basis. You want to keep track of this. Therefore, Noah's basis is 122,000. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures. Look at additional lectures, MCQs, true, false, notes. That's going to help you do what? Learn this concept better. The idea, the concept that a partnership is a flow through or pass through entity is important how inside basis of a tax of a partnership and how outside basis work is important as well good luck study hard whether you are a cpa candidate enrolled agent or an accounting student and stay safe of course